Hi guys, I know I don't usually do film reviews or film things anyway, but I, Alien and Star Wars, yeah, my, my two favourite movie franchises of all time, and I've been to see Alien Covenant, and I really, I really liked it. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but a lot of people did. A lot of people seem to be, uh, seem to be throwing a few ideas around about David's motives and why he does what what he did in the film and in between the two films. So I just thought I'd add my two cents to the matter. I bet no one gets that. Spoilers! First, be very careful. No spoilers in the thumbnail. No spoilers in the title. If you don't want any spoilers for this movie, then just go away. If you're not bothered, then stick around. Hi, welcome. In the film, we, we learn that David has was getting on with Shaw. You know, she, she put him back together and they have like, like banter. They get on. He draws pictures of her. It's all very nice. And he puts her to sleep because it's going to be years for them to travel to Paradise, which is the engineer's homeworld or supposed homeworld, but probably is the homeworld. And in that time, David, I'm not going to put any movie clips in or anything. This is going to be us. Just me and you. Uh, just personal. Anyway, so we, so David puts Shaw to, into his cryo sleep chamber and he goes, I'll wake you up when we when we get there. Now, I think he had every intention of waking her up when he got there. I don't think he was lying to her. I don't think he was trying to... He was faking it so that she would gain his trust because, like Mr. H says in Mr. H reviews, you don't need to do that. He could have just killed her if he wanted to. He didn't need to gain her trust. So she goes into there and he goes, I'll wake you when you get up. Now, while she's asleep, for all of those years... Now, we don't know... And I suppose there is a way we could work out how many years how long they were in transit for between the, the two places. In that time, David said he explored the ship and he learned of the engineer's ways. Now, what I think happened was David, I'm going to go backtrack a bit now. David isn't happy with the human race because of the way Wayland's treated him and the way that just humans generally been with Nick Shaw being an exception. He said that he's never known any human to be as compassionate and empathetic as Shaw has with him. So he's never seen that in human beings before. So with the exception of Shaw, he, he thinks that we're, we're evil, we're greedy, we're selfish. We only think of ourselves and that when we uh, set out to do things, there's only one thing that's on our mind and that's self-gratification. So he, he doesn't have any respect for the human race. Now when he says that he's learned of the engineer's ways, I think he's just found out the same thing about them. I think he's just learned that the engineers are the same as humans. They created us in the way that we created him. So in his eyes, they're no different. They're no better than we are. They've just, they created us who created him. So he's found out, I, I believe, that he learned of their ways, which was that they were greedy. They were selfish. They're not the kind people that gods are usually made out to be. So I, I think he was like, upset when he was killing them all because they weren't who everybody thought they were going to be they were a letdown just as humans were a letdown they were a letdown that's that's the way i look at it i, I don't think i don't think he thinks that he's above them i don't think he thinks he's above the human race either i just he doesn't want people with so much potential with so much scope to be perfect beings like we, we do we've got so much potential to be good what's always on the forefront of everybody's mind is just selfishness and things so if you're gonna like chores just wants to go find out why they created us and then why they wanted to kill us it's because the same reasons why ai is created humans just have the same disregard that the engineers have for humans it's the same with animals like, I, I, a lot of humans look down on animals because they can't communicate, they can't speak because they're not humans. They look down on them as, as lesser beings in the same way the engineers look down on us. We're just animals, we're just lesser beings to them. It's the same thinking that goes behind racism and extremism. It's all humans thinking that they're above all else. And that David recognised that in humans. He recognised it in the engineers and he was like, you know what? He even says, like, we're, we're not worthy to live. And I, I, I see his point. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying genocide is the way to do it. I'm, I just, I, I, I don't think he thinks he's above us. I just don't think he thinks we deserve it. That's what I think about David and his motivations. Yes, he goes the wrong way around it. However, I see his point, to be fair. I, I don't think there's this big secret on why he, he felt like he had to take out the engineers. I just think he was uh, sick of everyone being selfish. He was like, oh, not these guys as well. I think he was genuinely disappointed with the engineers. I think he had high hopes for them, like Shaw did. 
and he found out that they were just all like Wayland. So as for the, the film itself, the, the, there wasn't really much more depth in the film of Sider and David, which was a little bit disappointing. But my biggest problem was it was the the, the scenes of the Xenomorph. They were way too lit up. Oh, I, Ridley Scott, I don't know why he did this. In the first film, someone said to him, like, when he was filming it, Ridley, you've got all of these shots and you've got this fantastic suit. Why aren't you filming it? Why aren't you using these shots? Why are you cutting them out the movie? And he said, oh, because it's scarier when, the, when the, the mind imagines these things. But he seems to have forgotten it in this movie. And when the Xenomorph finally comes out to play, he's got big spotlight shining on it, which makes it look blatantly like CGI. I, I'm not against CGI, but CGI is CGI. It's, it's not good enough. Not good enough to be real, to be come across as real. It isn't. You can tell it's computer. It's like with in, in Rogue One. Ten years time, that CGI of uh, Leia and Gram of Tarkin, it's going to look so dated. It's going to stand out even more than it does now. It's not good enough yet to be used in that way. And if you shine bright lights on a CGI monster, it's just going to show that it's CGI. And it, if they... CGI looks good in the shadows, in the dark, which is where the Xenomorph belongs. It's not scary when it's just out in the open. But I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Uh, I know this isn't like my new uh, my uh, my usual videos, but my two cents to it. So there you have it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to smile because you are the face of the stable place game. Bye bye. <laughs> Now you're invisible ink! For all the ink it's found, take the stairs. Something that's not in there, no, something that's not in there.